I'm Marty Stauffer. Do you have a favorite color? Mine is blue. I don't know exactly why, but I'd much rather wear a blue shirt than a red shirt. Maybe it's because I look at the world through blue eyes, or it could be the way the color makes me feel, calm and comfortable. This is my favorite flower, the Colorado Blue Columbine. It's only one lovely example of the color blue occurring in nature. There are many others. Just how many might surprise you? Join me as we explore the plant and animal kingdoms for more beautiful blues. Blue is nature's most predominant color. It's also the most magical because it's reflected in the endless expanses of sea and sky. Unlike the chemical pigment in a robin's egg, the brilliant blue sparkle of minerals results from their molecular composition or crystal structure. Minerals are the building blocks of rocks, which in turn shape the landscape. But initially, there was only sky and water. Because of this, one might speculate that the first color to appear on Earth was blue. Even the first life form was a blue-green algae.
With rain providing moisture and sunshine providing energy, plant life flourished and the world was filled with color. Most birds sing at dawn or dusk. However, the song of the bunting can be heard in meadows throughout the day. It's interesting that although the red plumage of a cardinal is due to red pigmentation, there's no blue pigment in the feathers of any bird. The color of this bunting's feathers is due to microscopic structures which reflect blue wavelengths. Unlike other members of the crow family, jays are well known for their colorful plumage, like the soft hues of this scrub jay or the bold markings of this blue jay. The bright coloration of birds is evidence of their color vision. There's little difference between the color acuity of birds and of humans, although a bird's eyesight is more sensitive to movement than ours. A bird can spot the ants below from high up in the branches of a tree. Perhaps the most well-loved bird in America is the bluebird. Although the beauty of color is pleasing to our eyes, it has a more practical purpose in nature. Its function is simply to enhance survival. Every petal, feather, hair, and scale was colored by the process of natural selection. An animal's coloration may be for concealment, species recognition, warning, or for courtship and territorial displays. Some of the best examples of how it's used to attract a mate can be seen among fish. In a Louisiana bayou, this sailfin molly flashes the bright blue patch of his tail fin and erects his large dorsal fin to arouse a female as well as to flaunt his dominance to rival males. Nearby, an electric blue dragonfly is patrolling the stream bank for small flying insects.
This predatory insect once hovered on wings spanning two feet. Other than size, its anatomy has changed very little in 200 million years. In the water below, the sailfin molly continues his courtship ballet. Though rare, blue coloration can also be found among reptiles and amphibians. The most widely distributed snake in North America, the common garter snake, is divided into 12 subspecies, with each one having a variety of different color phases. The dorsal coloration of this male fence lizard conceals it from predators, but his shimmering blue throat and belly present an eye-catching enticement for female fence lizards. Blue-spotted salamanders congregate to breed in murky waters at night, so their vivid blue markings have most likely evolved as warning coloration rather than for sex recognition. Many conspicuously colored animals, like this highly noxious salamander, are simply advertising their toxicity to predators. Color provides us with clues to unlock the mysteries of the natural world. The less obvious aspects of a plant or animal's life are often revealed once we begin to question the reasons behind its coloring. In the high country of the Rocky Mountains, other examples of nature's blues can be found. Here, Wild iris adorn the landscape with their vibrant blue and yellow tinged petals. Feeding on wildflower nectar is a delicate blue butterfly. These butterflies, commonly referred to as blues, have congregated in a grassy alpine meadow to mate. Interestingly, their wing patterns are mainly designed to ward off predators rather than to attract mates. The dark wing spots focus the attention of a predator on the least critical area, the wing. This gives the butterfly an improved chance at escape. A combination of wing markings and scent is used for sex recognition. However, the markings designed for courtship reflect ultraviolet and are therefore invisible to the human eye. During copulation, a male deposits a packet of sperm, called a spermatophore, into the female's cloaca. Within 24 hours, she'll lay several hundred eggs on the larval host plant.
In contrast to the lush Rockies, the arid Guadalupe Mountains of West Texas are much more barren. Here, color plays a less important role in the scheme of life, since many animals adapt to this harsh environment by restricting their activities to the cool, dark nights. One of the largest mammals inhabiting this region, the mountain lion, makes a rare appearance during the day. The kittens bounce along behind their mother as she leads them to her kill site. In general, mammals are not very colorful animals. They normally blend in with their surroundings. So it's not surprising that most mammals, with the exception of primates, have poor color vision. To attract mates, defend territories, and escape predators, they rely more on their highly developed senses and behavior patterns, rather than colorful displays. A mountain lion kitten, with its tawny spotted coat, certainly wouldn't rank among the more colorful mammals in the world. Or would it? A closer look reveals eye color that gives new meaning to the word blue. Their blue eyes serve no adaptive function. Rather, the pigment cells of the adult's iris are absent in the newborns, then gradually develop as the kittens grow. It will be at least another four months before their eyes turn amber, like their mother's. Yet already, the kitten's eyesight is very keen, and this alert youngster is constantly on the lookout for small prey, or for danger. The coloration of banded rock rattlesnakes in West Texas varies according to the color of the rock they live among. The blue phase of this rattlesnake generally lives and hunts among bluish-gray limestone. While the granite and basalt exposures are home to the brown phase. Unlike this collared lizard, whose conspicuous coloration most likely evolved for courtship and threat displays, rock rattlesnakes have evolved a coloration which matches their environment. Camouflage not only conceals them from their predators, but also from their prey. The two color phases are rarely found together, except where limestone formations occur next to granite outcroppings. The dry desert mountains are brightened by cactus flowers. Flowers are color-coded to attract certain types of pollinators. Blue flowers attract bees and other insects whose vision is more sensitive to blue and ultraviolet wavelengths. Wildflowers, such as this lupin, evolved bright coloration to advertise their sweet-tasting nectar. In exchange for this food, the insect is dusted with pollen, which it then spreads from plant to plant. Once pollination is completed, the next problem for flowering plants is seed dispersal. 
Many of them solve this problem by producing fleshy fruits, like these blueberries, which are then eaten by wildlife. The seeds are later passed through their digestive tracts. Bears consume these tasty fruit, but the bright coloration of berries primarily evolved to attract birds, whose color vision is better than that of mammals. The reason being that birds are more effective seed dispersers than mammals, since they drop the seeds much further from the parent plant. The ripening fruit attracts other bears, Unwilling to share in the bounty, the large bear stakes his claim over this blueberry patch. Many examples of nature's blues can be found in the ocean. The rocky coastline of Maine is colored by blue sea mussels. These mussels produce a sticky substance that enables them to adhere to rocks, both in and out of water. If large amounts of this superglue can be synthesized, it could be extremely useful for many types of surgical and dental repairs. Some of the oddest shaped creatures in the sea are also the most colorful. Both anemones and sea urchins appear to be anchored to rocks. Instead, they're constantly on the move. Some of the most dazzling colors in the animal kingdom belong to tropical reef fish. the largest creatures in the sea, and in fact ever to inhabit the earth, are blue. Amazingly, blue whales feed on some of the smallest of marine creatures, tiny shrimp-like crustaceans called krill. Although we're not always aware of it, color affects our moods. In our society, blue stands for loyalty, harmony, and tranquility. But in the ocean, a silvery blue shark has anything but a calming effect on our emotions. As a rule, lobster shells are reddish brown. However, there are exceptions. Their normal coloration is obtained from their diet of seaweed and crabs, which provide pigment for their shells. But a lobster deprived of its natural food source gradually fades to a pale blue. These crustaceans come in a variety of colors for reasons other than just dietary. One in 10 million lobsters may be yellow, orange, 
white, or even bright blue. The color of this lobster is the result of a genetic mutation. Its shell contains pigments for the primary colors, but for some unknown reason, this true blue variety is unable to synthesize its red and yellow pigments. Lobsters of any color are territorial and will fiercely guard their burrows against intruders. Although many animals must fight by tooth or claw to survive and reproduce, there are many others which use their adaptive coloration to accomplish the same thing. Yet I believe the importance of color is not only in its survival value, but also in its capacity to strengthen the ties between mankind and nature. Our sense of fascination and respect for the natural world is enriched by the many hues of blue. One of the things I love most about the great outdoors is that my senses come alive. My ears tune in to the songs of birds. My skin tingles from the slightest brush of wind, and my eyes are revived by the brilliant profusion of color. Yet of all the many hues of nature, the rich crimsons, rustic yellows, and cool greens, to me, the most enchanting of all are the beautiful blues. I'm Marty Stauffer. Until next time, enjoy our wild America. Thank you.